So we're here with another episode of the AMD Developer Central Inside Track video series, uh, which I'm shortening to add it video series from now on because it's such a long name. And we're sitting here with Randy Vander Hayden. Randy, why don't you tell us your title and how many years you've been here at AMD and what you do? My name is Randy Vander Hayden, and I've been at AMD uh, about 17 years uh, since the days of the 386. Wow. And I'm a member of the technical staff in the ISV engineering team, uh, supporting our software partners. Wow, that's been a, a long ride here at AMD. Indeed. So I think you're very well qualified to tell us a little bit about CPU ID. And uh, first of all, what is it? Okay, CPU ID is an x86 or x64 instruction. Um, it's been around I think since about the uh, K6 days, which would be probably about 12 years or so. Now this instruction, which is can be run from assembly language, um, there's also intrinsics for this instruction. Um, if you're a Microsoft developer um, and you look for the CPU ID intrinsic, uh, you'll find it in the help system under Visual Studio. Um, this instruction is usually used to find specific details about your hardware. Uh, might be as simple as which uh, instruction extensions does my CPU that I'm running on support. Most common examples today are does it support SSE, SSE2, and so on. It can also be used to find a little more specific detail about your microprocessors such as cache sizes, and more importantly, how many cores are on this processor. Wow, so it gives you really a lot of information that you can use. Um, so when would you need to use something like CPU ID? Well, there's, there's a couple different times when developers use it. Um, quite often if they're writing an optimized code path where they want to use or generate, uh, again, some kind of vectorized code like SSE2, mm -hmm. Um, they need to put in their code somewhere some kind of uh, CPU ID instruction so that they'll not so they'll know that the processor they're currently running on supports it. If it doesn't support it, then they usually have a, a more generic code path mm. that the uh, processor will execute on. Now in more recent years, the, uh, as we move towards more multi-threaded code, um, developers can use CPU ID to determine how many cores are on the system my software is presently running on. Um, this helps them decide perhaps how many threads or how they want to split their code apart to run. That's a very good point considering that more and more people are having to go to parallel uh, programming these days. So along that line, is there any way that CPU ID could be used wrong? Or, you know, is there anything to look out for? What advice would you give? Sure. Um, one of the things CPU ID can return is what's called the vendor string or the vendor ID. And this is a plain text uh, string, which will show you who the manufacturer of the processor is. Mm -hmm. You can also get model numbers from CPU ID. And while this information may be useful, um, we, we don't encourage that you make um, specific decisions based on this information. For example, if you know it's a certain AMD processor, if you are familiar enough with the processors, you might decide, oh, I know all of these processors support SSE2. We don't recommend doing this because you might be cutting out other manufacturers or even other models of AMD processors mm -hmm. from executing this optimized code path. So use the specific feature bits that you're really trying to test, you know, whether it's SSE2 or uh, some other feature. Just look at those bits um, and, make, and make the decision based on them. That way, any other vendors, processors that you're running on will also take advantage of that code path. Great example. Um, 
So let's see it in action. Do you have, can you show us what it looks like when you run a CPU ID? Sure. Um, what I'm going to run is um, our sample program that's on our website, developer.amd.com. And it's a good example of just basic enumeration of how many processors do I have and how many cores are on each processor. OK, this program is just called enum, E-N-U-M. And I'm going to run it giving a little extra information, which if you look at this program from the website, you'll see how to do that. I'm running this program on a uh, engineering prototype that we have of what we call internally the Magni Cores processor. Um, this is a 12-core processor. And this particular box has two sockets. And what I'm showing is that the sample code can can expand to easily to that many processors. It's showing that I have a total of 24 processors, basically two sockets, ID0 and ID1, with each one with 12 cores. And up above here, it's showing a little bit more detailed information, such as the APIC ID and some of the other technical information that's available from CPU ID. And by the way, this is nowhere near all the information you can glean from CPU ID. Uh, using both our architecture manuals, which is volume three, or our CPU ID spec, you can read more about the specific bits that are there. Great. So we will have a link to this uh, great article that Tracy Carver wrote that has some code samples right next to the video here, as well as the links to the architecture manuals too. So thanks for your time, Randy. This has been very valuable. There's a lot of various questions that pop up about CPU ID from various times on the forums and in our work with developers. So I appreciate you taking the time to give us this in-person talk about it. You're welcome. Thanks.